Hey guys, welcome back to another Photoshop tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you a few tips on creating some makeup. Now naturally, this doesn't mean that you shouldn't hire a talented makeup artist. But if you need to touch up makeup and post, this is uh, one way of doing it. We'll uh, go over some eye and lip work. We're only working with the makeup. No skin or other color editing has been done, done to this pic. Uh, just to remind you, this is not one of my photos. This is a photo that I found uh, available on a website called ediblephotos.com. I'll put the link below so you can download it and try it yourself and uh, you can practice some of your retouching. What I always like to do is duplicate the background and uh, work on a copy of the layer. You can either do that by dragging the layer to the uh, new icon there or just Command J. And also too with some extensive Photoshop work I always like to create a help layer. This help layer basically is like a road map. It uh, just allows me to identify some of the things that I want to address uh, throughout the entire editing process. And what we'll do here is use a finer tipped uh, brush tool and with a bright color, red in this case. Uh, just kind of highlight some of the things and address them. And in this case, we'll address some of the cracking in the lips and some of the uh, mascara and such. Okay, let's go ahead and hide that layer for now. Let's create a uh, new blank layer, and on this blank layer, we'll make all the adjustments uh, with the healing tool. And with the healing brush, you can select the healing brush with J on a Mac, and the menu above, just make sure that the current and below is selected. And we'll go ahead and start editing some of the cracks in the lips here. And we'll just do that by uh, using the healing brush and selecting an area right next to the crack on the lip and uh, just kind of duplicating the area that we want to copy onto the cracked area. All right, now once we're happy, we'll do a comparison before and after. That looks pretty good. We'll just touch this up a little bit here. Now, it doesn't have to be totally smooth. Remember, lips do have a texture, and we want to keep that. All right, now once we're happy with that, we'll select both layers and we'll hit Shift, select both layers, and we'll hit Command E on a Mac and that'll merge both layers together. Now let's color the lips by uh, first creating a mask onto which we'll apply the color. You can either go to the icon on the bottom of the toolbar or hit Q on your keyboard and enter the quick mask mode. By double clicking, as you saw on the quick mask icon, you're uh, presented with a few options. I like having selected area clicked and you can change the color of the mask to anything you want. Traditionally it's red but that's not the color of the lipstick that's only the color we're creating to fill in for the mask. Alright, well, let's go back to the channels palette and click on the new quick mask that we created. And here we're going to see every little spot that we miss. So we'll just fill in the blanks here with using a black brush. And we'll just uh, color in wherever we missed. Now we'll select the RGB. And by command clicking the quick mask, we're creating a selection. Head on down to the color adjustment layer and select a color. And since we created a selection for it, it automatically creates a mask. And here we're going to just kind of find the color that we're happy with. We'll call this lip color. And again, we'll hide and show. Let's go back to the channels palette and Let's find a channel that has the most contrast in the lips to get some texture. It looks like blue is a good one. So we'll drag that to the new layer icon and we'll make a copy of that. And Command L brings up the levels dialog. And we're going to add a little bit more pop and contrast to that particular channel. Let's go back to the layers and select the color adjustment layer. And let's go ahead and add a color using the multiply blending mode. Now we want to apply image and up here we want to select the lip color which is a layer that we found and use the channel that we duplicated, the blue copy 
and we'll see here that we added back the texture to the lips. So let's hold shift and new group icon and we'll call this lips. Now we're going to create two curves adjustments and we're going to use these for dodging and burning. We'll call this the high and we can just call this low. And with the curve adjustments we'll find the point and we'll drop it and make it a little darker for the shadows. Same thing with the high but we'll just raise it for highlights and we'll go ahead and inverse both layer masks. So by inversing layer masks we're just basically hiding the curves adjustments and I'm going to go up here for each of the blending modes. I want to uh, select a different blending mode, screen for high and multiply for low. So let's go ahead and select our brush and make sure we have white with a low opacity and very low flow, not more than 10%. What we'll do is with our white brush we'll just paint in back the highlights. And this is basically a dodging and burning technique. And the advantage of having the two layers like this using curves is that we can control independently our highlights and our shadows. Now if you uh, hold the Alt key on a Mac and select the layer mask, if you don't have the properties dialog showing already, it will bring up the property dialog box. And what we'll do is we'll just feather the painting that we just did a little bit to soften the edges. Show and hide the group and you can see the difference there. Lips really pop out and we've added the curves adjustments and the color. We'll select both curves adjustments and holding the shift key in the group icon layer we'll select them both and like we did with the lips we'll go ahead and call this dodge and burn just so we can control it independently of the color. We can change the opacity here as you can see. We'll just get it to what we like something to suit our tastes. Let's zoom in a little bit here. You can see how the curves adjustments really makes those lips pop. Now that we're done with the lips, let's uh, move on to eye makeup. We'll zoom out here a little bit, take an overall look. and Let's get in there and uh, start working on the eyes. So let's go ahead and create a new folder and we'll call this eyes. Okay, we'll do the same thing. We're going to create a quick mask again. So we'll just hit uh, Q on the keyboard or we can go down to the icon on the bottom left of the toolbar. We'll go ahead and paint in a little bit of a bigger brush. Make it 100%. That'll be good because we're just creating a mask. And you're going to see we're going to use red again, but that's not the color that we'll use eventually. That's just the color of the mask. And we're going to paint in where I think some of the uh, liner would go and uh, that looks pretty good for now. We'll hit Q again. We've created a selection, so we'll go to Solid Color. We'll find the color that we're happy with here. Looks a little silly right now, but we haven't made all the adjustments yet. So let's find the uh, adjustment layer, or rather blending mode, and here we'll want to experiment a little bit. You'll want to see what works best for you. Uh, hue is probably the one that has the least effect, but that might actually work for you. It doesn't matter that we paint it over the eyebrows because we'll, again, because we're making a mask, uh, we can adjust it later. And we'll go ahead and select the layer mask and we'll paint in back some of the other functions that we want to use. I think that looks pretty good. All right, so let's go ahead and use the black brush and we'll paint out some of the things that we don't want colored in. And we can use the white brush to color things back in. And again, you see the skin has some blemishes, and we haven't even addressed that. This is just all about makeup. So using a black, softer brush here, a little bit less opacity, we'll just kind of paint in and soften the edges a little bit with the black brush. We're just softening some of the edges here. Okay, now that we've got those a little soft and fluffy around the edges. Let's go back to that blue copy channel that we uh, created earlier. And I like the contrast in that so we'll refer to it in a minute. So let's alt click a layer mask on the color fill layer. Let's go up to image and apply image. And here we're going to select that color fill layer. And for channel, that blue copy that we used. And we'll make sure that it's not inverted. Okay that. And here you'll see that it defined that mask 
a little nicer. It cleared out the blue in the eyelash area and along some of the eyebrow. So we could adjust here the opacity again to suit. It's whatever you like and every image will be a little different naturally. So let's do something different here. Let's go to the effects palette and select color gradient overlay. Sorry, I'm going to use multiply and I'm going to lower that opacity and that's going to create a little bit more pop. It's going to create a little more shadow and definition. And you can see hide and show. And because we are using masks, we can uh, fill in with black anything we want to hide and define the color a little better. So we'll go ahead and do that and just touch up here a little bit. And this is again just a tutorial, so I'm kind of pushing through it a little bit so as to not waste your time. And I presume you'll take a little bit more time. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit here and take a closer look at what we're doing. Now I want to really enhance some of the side shadows, so I'm going to uh, drag this layer to the new layer icon and change the color because it is a color adjustment layer. We can do that, and since we already created the uh, mask for it, we can just uh, duplicate that. And I'm going to just create a little bit more shadow, and because I made it a little darker color, I'm just going to paint away the parts that I don't want and that naturally will reveal the layer beneath it. We'll lower the opacity here a little bit. And the benefit to using masks is that you can always paint in or take away what you're uh, revealing with just uh, brush strokes. So we're just kind of painting away some of the details and adding back in a little bit more color. Now again, this is not a replacement for a talented makeup artist. But if you need to adjust anything in post, this is a good way of doing it. So let's go ahead and select both again. And holding the shift key and the new group icon, we selected both layers and put them in the same group. And you can see that we worked a little bit on the makeup and it looks decent. I'm not a makeup artist, but it, it does its job. So let's go ahead and create some eyelashes. There are any number of websites online uh, where you can download eyelash brushes it makes this a lot easier so let's go ahead and find something that we can use I'll put a link to a couple in the description below and what we'll do is it uh, treats it just like any other brush so we'll just go ahead and size it make sure we have the right color selected and I'll turn the uh, brush a little bit and we'll just experiment here a little bit reduce it and make sure that we're at hundred percent up in opacity, we want something really dark. And uh, I like to use darken or multiply. And on its own layer, click it once. All right, that looks decent. We'll go to the uh, right eye or left on the screen and we'll adjust the rotation again. We'll create a, another layer for this one specifically. And it takes a little tweaking. And what we'll do is we'll hit the brush once. And there we go, that looks good. Now we're going to Command T, and we'll get the free transform tool, and we'll adjust the new eyelashes to fit within the eye. We'll do the same thing. We'll go back to the right layer, and we'll adjust this Command T. Turn it and twist it until we get it right. We'll group these together, shift both of them, and we'll merge them. Command E. We'll I'm going to hit blur just a little bit, half a pixel, something really soft. We'll show and hide, you can see that. Now we're just going to address one of the things that we noticed before, uh, this glob of uh, eyeliner here. So we'll just create a new layer. We'll just call it healing and we'll adjust to it, hitting the uh, healing brush small brush. We'll just clean up some of those ends there that globbed up a little bit in this particular image. Again, every image will be a little different. So we'll just go ahead and clean this up a little bit here. We'll do a little comparison. Show and hide some of the uh, edits that we're making. Okay, that looks pretty good. We'll zoom out. Well, not that much. Alright, so let's go ahead and create a little bit more shadow in the uh, 
eye color there and what we'll do is we'll create uh, let's open up this uh, group and we'll create a new curves adjustment and here we'll go to the bottom curves adjustment we'll take a spot on the line and we'll drop it a little bit and we'll uh, reverse that inverse that rather and we'll zoom in to see what we've got going on here and we'll make sure that we have a white brush like that make a white brush and lower opacity and we'll just kinda with a low flow here and we'll just kinda paint in a little bit more of the shadows so uh, let's go ahead and just slowly paint in shadows a little bit more definition around the edge on the eyeliner just to give it a little bit more pop the eyebrows we can touch those up a little bit showing high you can see it does have a little bit of an impact so let's alt click the layer mask and with the properties hit feather and soften the uh, selection up a little bit We'll give it a little bit more pop by bringing up the levels command and uh, we'll do command L and that brings up levels and we can really add more contrast to that particular mass that we created. Alright, so that's it. Zoom out. Change the opacity a little bit. Change it to multiply. See what that does. Maybe darken. You can mess around with it. Go back to normal. I like multiply gives it some nice pop. We'll lower the opacity a little bit here. Zoom in. And because again we're using masks, we can paint away what we don't want or where we overpaint it. In this particular case we definitely don't want to get the pupils. And again, no other edits have been made. You can see there's some uh, red vessels in her eyes and some imperfections in the skin. I was just more concerned with the lips and the eye makeup. And what we'll do is we'll duplicate the background image and bring it way to the top and we'll see it before and after. It's pretty dramatic. Again, I'm not a makeup artist, but it's good to just know how to do these things in post in case you have to touch up some makeup. But there is no reason to not hire a professional makeup artist. A talented makeup artist will make your job much easier. And there you are, a couple of tweaks here and there. We'll just change the opacity a little bit of something here. We'll zoom in, give it a look. And again, this isn't anything I shot. This is available on ediblephotos.com. And that looks pretty good. And we'll just go in and check out the uh, help layer that we created early on. See that we addressed everything that we wanted to. That looks pretty good. We'll hide that. And from here, it's just minor tweaks. And if you're interested in following me on Facebook, I'm at facebook.com slash 954photos or twitter.com slash Ribeiro. Check out more of my work at ribeiro.com. Subscribe to this channel for more tutorials and behind the scenes videos. And thanks again, guys. Hope you picked something up. And let me know in the comments field if you have any questions and I'll try to address them. Check out another tutorial I'll be working on. Hopefully I'll be doing these once a week. And I uh, look forward to seeing your comments. And if you want to email me some of your work, that'd be great. Thanks, guys.